agreed to, and I call the member for Goldstein. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, that was the most insufferable few minutes I have ever experienced in my life from the member for Whitlam. And that's a surprise because we've had other members like the member for Holtz who have also extolled themselves in the uh, chamber as the member for Fraser, amongst others. Because in the end, it this bill comes down to a simple proposition. Without the amendment, it goes to the point of integrity or tax integrity about the idea that we're going to have a tax system where people who have obligations are going to meet them and whether they're not. And we're in favour of doing that. We're in favour of making sure people can do that, making sure corporations can do that, but also making sure that we provide appropriate relief in the circumstances for superannuation funds. But in saying that, I do understand when the conception of in tax integrity or integrity period is difficult for the member for Whitlam, because he has the same. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'm done. Resume his seat. The member for Scullin. Thank you, Deputy on a point Speaker. He should not be reflecting on a member. I thank the member for Scullin. Uh, it would assist the House if the member for Goldstein will withdraw and continue. Deputy Speaker, for the sake of, uh, I shall withdraw. I shall withdraw. Member for Goldstein, I, in continuation. I, I will continue on my reflections uh, on the legislation and raise my general concerns about uh, the integrity of the system and the integrity of those people who espouse it and the integrity in the situation where we might have particular people who have complete disregard for tax integrity for this country. And there are, of course, some people inside this and outside this place who have little regard for the expenditure of public money and how it is spent. And so I welcome the opportunity, at least because it seems that the member for Whitlam, uh, in his address, still has not come to terms with the basic reality uh, of the extent of multinational tax avoidance. In fact, he started from the very proposition for uh, the member for McKellar, who got up directly and challenged the fact that he uh, was claiming uh, that $13 billion was foregone revenue when, in fact, it was only $2 billion. That can only happen in a situation where they have no or little interest uh, in the facts of the matter uh, and in the legislation at hand. The basis of our support for this legislation is simple, because we want to make sure uh, that super funds can merge appropriately and in the best interests of their members. It is an entirely legitimate objective and one that we should support on the basis of integrity, but also for, to make sure that super funds can act where they see fit through consolidation. It is also about making sure that we have significant global entities meeting and honouring their obligations uh, to the Australian taxpayer. Because the reality is when you have a tax system which has uh, leakage or opportunities where people are able to forego their responsibilities, then somebody else has to pick up the burden and it falls on the Australian taxpayer to carry the costs of society. Everybody must share in that responsibility and that is the basis in which I support this legislation, but not the show ponying of the opposition in their amendments to the legislation. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for 